I'm pretty excited to share this with you. We are going to do 3D mapping with Pix4D. We are going to use Pix4D and the Mavic Pro to capture some footage of a local water tower and turn it into a 3D object. This is my first 3D mapping experience, but I want to show you the simple steps I use to turn captured footage into a 3D object on the computer. You will also learn some of the pitfalls other tutorials leave out when things are not going as planned. Before we start, I want to remind you that we are uploading drone and e-wheel related material weekly to help you get the best out of your equipment. So if you're new to this channel, then please consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button below, the bell notification next to it, so you don't miss out on the important stuff. Today we're using software from a Swiss company called Pix4D. They've been around since 2011 and it seems like a pretty easy solution to get me started. There are other options like Drone Deploy that work in a similar way. Have you tried 3D mapping software? Share your experience in the comment section below. To build this model, you basically uh, capture a series of 2D images and a software algorithm stitches them together to the final 3D model. It's pretty amazing what can be achieved with this kind of technology. I'm using Mavic Pro to capture the footage, but other drones are compatible as well. Because this is uh, based on autonomous missions, you need to make sure that your drone is compatible. I will leave a link in the description below for the PIX4D compatibility list. But as far as I know, most DJI drones are supported. First, you need to go to the App Store or the Play Store to download the PIX4D capture app. Next, you need to download the Control Plus DJI if you have a DJI drone. I will be using the Android version for my mission today. You need to create a PIX4D account and enable the trial version of uh, the cloud service to be able to seamlessly upload and process uh, the pictures afterwards. Now we are ready to fetch some images of the local water tower. Before we take off, it's always a good idea to check that your drone is running the latest firmware. I also want to point out uh, that the, some of the footage that you're going to see afterwards is uh, speeded up and not replayed in one-to-one. -one. So what you see uh, when you try this yourself might differ from what's shown in the video. Now we are here at our location. I just launched the uh, uh, Pix4D uh, capture app and this is uh, the main screen. And uh, I have fired up uh, the Mavic and uh, now I will plug it in so uh, see what to do next. So it will prompt me and I need to go and do this, make it transfer files and then I have to pick the control plus uh, DJI and give that access uh, to control the drone. That. You see now it says it's connected and uh, I can open the, or reopen the Pix4D capture app. And because we are filming a single object uh, that we want to turn into a 3D model, we are choosing circular mission. You should play around with some of the other options uh, if you like. Uh, they will give different results and they are optimized for different purposes. But uh, right now we are choosing circular mission. And what you see here is, uh, this is the, the default uh, field that uh, uh, the, the app is recommending um, as, a, as a pattern to fly. And this is, as this is a circular uh, mission, it's a circle. So you can sort of move this area around and position it. Uh, and of course it will film whatever is uh, in the center of this uh, circle. Another detail is, uh, I can make this, so if I, Sort of make this big, really, 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 really big. Then it will tell you if it's too big. Um, so, so that's pretty nice. So you can't really do anything wrong here. I will reset it to default size. And then I will position it on top of the water tower, like that. And I know the water tower is uh, 32 meters, so uh, I want to go to a safe distance of 60 uh, to uh, be able to capture as much information as uh, possible. Uh, another thing that I found useful is to reduce the speed a bit, so it has enough time to do to follow the the GPS pattern that it's supposed to do, so like that. So now we are ready to take off. Uh, on a mission. So I press start 
and it says it's connected to the drone and uh, we're mapping a 100 times 100 uh, ground map and uh, the flight altitude is 60 meters above ground i press next the mission is being uploaded to the drone i have check marks at every point so i can just press and hold for three seconds in a little while the drone will fire up and take off Sometimes it takes a while for the drone to take off when you have launched the mission. I've seen up to 10 seconds or more before anything happens. I also experienced problems where the mission would not execute at all. There's luckily a workaround for that. You just need to wait for the error matches to pop up, saying something like image list cannot be retrieved, then go exit to the main screen and then go back in and relaunch the mission. This is super annoying, but at least there's a workaround. I uninstalled the DJI GO app to prevent it from conflicting with the PIX4D software. But unfortunately, it did not seem to uh, solve the problem completely. So now it's off. And it start by climbing to the 60 meters uh, that was specified uh, just before. And after it reached its uh, altitude, then it will move to the first uh, waypoint. And it has a tendency to overshoot these, these waypoints uh, in the beginning, but uh, it seems it found its way back. Or oh, maybe not. You just experienced a real flyaway. The Mavic kept flying away from its mission at full speed for a long time before I gained control. The solution was to flick it into sports mode, but I actually had to do it a, a few times uh, to gain control and fly back safely. To me, it seems uh, that the Mavic is approaching the first waypoint way too fast and in that way loses orientation. This is something that Pix4D have to look into because this is absolutely not okay. I would suggest to Pix4D to include in the software a setting that will allow you to slow down the speed when you're approaching the first waypoint. This might help uh, prevent this problem from happening. After this uh, experience, I want to add a disclaimer to this video. You should play with the Pix4D uh, software at your own risk and be aware that this can happen. Even if this was super scary, I decided to take one for the community and launch another mission. Let's do a second attempt. launch the mission now we just wait for it to take off Again, it's climbing to the 60 meters. And it's important, uh, as we have seen, uh, to keep visual contact with the drone all the time. To see what it's doing. And this time it's uh, it's on track. So now it's recording uh, pictures. And remember, if it for some reason deviates from the route, then you uh, your your options are either return to home, or flick it into sport mode, and take manual control.
does require a bit of practice to get this right, uh, especially when you photo an uh, object like this water tower, because uh, not everything is visual from uh, above. So um, that might be able to show on the model, but at least this is uh, some uh, a basic introduction uh, that will allow you to get started with this uh, 3D mapping. And uh, so hopefully you can go out and experiment yourself. It's uh, pretty fun and uh, it's interesting to see what results can be gained from, uh, from this. So now, now it's soon to complete its round. And what would happen next when it enters the last waypoint is that it would stop and then it would start beeping uh, when indicating it's returning to home. Now it landed safely, uh, basically in the middle of uh, the launch pad. So that was a 100% autonomous mission that went well. So, uh, but um, still keep an eye on the drone when it's flying because it can uh, make a runaway uh, if it somehow overshoots the route that you wanted to travel. So, uh, so it's important, still important to keep an eye on it. You can't trust it 100%. This time the mission was a success. Mavic captured 31 images. The, the pictures are synchronized automatically uh, into the app. And uh, what we can do now is we can go back here and go into the project list. And this is project 14. So if I go in here, I will get a nice drawing of uh, the route that it has just flown. And uh, I can get a preview of the pictures that has been taken. And as you can see, this was not successful because I did not capture the tower. So this is a nice way to, it would have been nice to have some sort of preview from the drone. But uh, as I can see right now, this was not good. So I have to do it again to capture the tower. In part two, I will complete the mission and capture a full model of the water tower and convert it into a 3D model that can be viewed on the computer. Hope you enjoyed the first part of this 3D mapping experiment. If so, smash the like button below. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button next to me so you don't miss out on part two.